Do you love Chip and Company podcast? Be sure to head over to chipandco.com for even more Disney Parks news, entertainment, and review podcast. Chip and Company has been delivering the best in Disney news, planning tips, and more since 2009. And now you can get that news in an audio-only format, now five days a week. Every Monday, join Mark and Greg for Diz Life Podcast and start your week off the right way by living your best Disney life. Tuesday is our news and review podcast discussing the latest breaking news from the Walt Disney Corporation. Every Wednesday, we're discussing the best of Disney parks with Chip and Greg. Thursdays have Mark and Greg breaking down the top headlines of the week in And Company, a weekly news roundup. And don't forget to tune into Extra every single weekend where we give you a deep dive on the biggest topic of the week. Get that extra dose of Disney in your weekly commute, your time on the treadmill, or even just relaxing around the house. So what are you waiting for? Head over to chipandco.com today and become part of the fastest growing podcast network in the Disney community. We hope that you enjoy today's podcast and thank you for being a part of our podcast family. And now, two guys that may or may not have put up their Christmas trees early, Greg the Disney fanatic and Diz Life Mark. Ahoy uh, hoy everyone and welcome to And Company. Welcome to our weekly review of the top headlines here at chipandco.com as we dive deeper into the topics that continue to garner your love and your attention. Thank you for being part of our show here on the Chip and Company Podcast Network. Don't forget, please subscribe and be part of the fastest growing podcast network in the Disney community where you can now get a daily dose of Disney five days a week. On today's podcast, we are talking about we need a little Christmas right this very moment as Disney decorations have arrived. The Santa Clauses, the Santa Claus, the Santa Clauses, Tim Al- oh, the Santa Claus, Tim Allen returns in the Santa Claus is. I will get through that one eventually. Stop trying to enter Disney without a ticket, man. Tron. <laughs> gets closer to opening with a new team being selected this week. I will be bringing you the spicy hot take and Mark will be bringing you the Rushmore of the week. And of course, as always, we will spend some time trying to figure out where in the world is Mr. Chomp, Mr. Chomfer, (laughs) Mr. Chip Confer has disappeared this week. Before we get to the headlines, let me welcome you. Let me welcome to the show, our co-host, and event company, Mark, I've lost it. And the purveyor of Diz Life Podcast, ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Mr. Mark Valentine. Mark, how are you doing today, my friend? Happy birthday, Greg. Happy birthday. <laughs> how oh, are you? Happy Thursday, man. Wonderful. It's Thursday. It is. We are on the eve of the wine and dine 5K. Do you have your pinky pie? Confetti popper ready for me. They are ready to go. We will be there at the finish line, popping some champagne, popping some tags. Whoa, oh, and uh, <laughs> lighting up some confetti cannons. Uh, we will specifically be doing that for the 10K, which is the one you are dreading the most. Oh, I am dreading the 10K. But if you want to pop some champagne after the 10K, I'm all for that. Or as you know, I feel like we should. Again, it's all the rage. Let's have a Negroni Spagliato with Prosecco on it. Brilliant. Words. Those were wonderful words. I don't know. What is that? <laughs> all right, man. Let's get into off. The, Yeah, let's get into the top headlines of the week. Again, if you are clicking on it, if you're talking about it, we're talking about it here on And Company. Uh, let's start off with it's the most wonderful time of the year greg uh the christmas decorations have officially arrived at the magic kingdom earlier in this week it's amazing one night it's halloween the next night it's christmas but overnight the magic kingdom changes from one holiday to the other at the entrance of the magic kingdom Holiday Mickey and Minnie are greeting guests. Fans are taking selfies for now using a photo pass photographer in that spot. Uh, guests that are visiting, visiting the Magic Kingdom will see the Christmas decorations throughout the park. It looks like in 2022, 
Disney is going a little light on the decorations to start, even with that huge Christmas tree on Main Street. But it's not yet quite there. It's not yet installed. As people know, over the course of the next few days and weeks, uh, Disney will continue to ramp up the decorations. But Greg, are you in the holiday spirit yet, my friend? I am festive. I have my ears on, my uh, Chip and Dale holiday ears. I was dressed in my f- finest Christmas shirts. I'm ready to pull out my Christmas sweater, have some hot cocoa, and see Mickey's very merry Christmas party. I love the holidays, Mark. I don't know how much more excited I can be. I I was over at the park uh, the other day getting pictures of this, uh, and it was quite wonderful to just be in the park. There's a festive spirit about being in the Magic Kingdom. And not only that, once the tree is is installed, it's just going to feel joyous, and the music will be playing. And I, I just don't see a better spot you can be in this world than at Disney's Magic Kingdom during the Christmas and the holiday season. So this is one of the first years that we don't have the tree up today. And a lot of that is because again, we're, uh, you know, I'm heading out of town. I have the race, but be rest assured the Christmas tree will be up firmly and in place long before Thanksgiving. Wait, 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 wait. I don't care. Judge me. I'm sorry. I have to interrupt you. Go ahead. If you put up the tree this early, that means you must have a fake tree. We do have an artificial tree. Um, and we have to, Yeah, you have to. When you put when you put the tree up in the first or second week in November, uh, it's got to be an artificial tree. Otherwise, that thing's going to go up like a tinderbox like it did in National Lampoons, <laughs> where you're going to have Uncle Lewis, who's just going to, could you bring me one of your stogies? And he's just going to light that tree up on fire. It is going up. Tell me um, that is not one of the greatest Christmas movies in all time, by the way. National it is Lampoon. not. Absolutely the worst. I hate National Wait, what? <laughs> Do not like it. We have just found something that you and I don't agree on. I dislike it. Holly loves it. I am not a National Lampoon's Christmas vacation. It's okay fan. to be wrong. I don't like Chevy Chase. Oh, man. I don't well, like who's the guy. He's a nice guy. It's- <laughs> for Chevy, Chevy Chase. Chase is such a nice guy, dude. I have heard he is amazing to work with. No, uh, he's he a is not. Human being, uh, he loved doing this movie. No, I do not endorse this. Yeah, Chevy go Chase or anything about it. Yeah, go but, go and see some of the interviews that have, especially recently, have come out with the cast of Community and talking about working with Chevy Chase on the set of Community. Community, It was anything but a a fun and positive experience. But, Greg, we digress. Moving on to another, not not Community, but another uh, amazing intellectual property. Right. The Santa Clauses, plural. Speaking of Christmas time, how could we not talk about Tim Allen and the Santa Claus's return? This was actually one of the top articles this week at Chip and Company. So Disney Plus debuted a new trailer for the upcoming original series, The Santa Clauses. The first two episodes of the six-episode series will premiere Wednesday, November 16th, exclusively on Disney Plus. Scott Calvin is back. After being Santa Claus for nearly 30 years, he is as jolly as ever. But as Christmas declines in popularity, so does his Santa magic. Scott struggles to keep up with the demands of the job, as well as being there for his family. Upon discovering there is a way to retire from his post, Scott considers stepping down as a Santa Claus and finding a worthy successor so that he can become a better father and husband. Excuse me, question? Question, um, sir. Um, yes. Is the replacement yes. for the Santa Claus, is, is it Chris Evans? And uh, how does Patricia Captain? Heaton feel about this? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Isn't that like what the whole thing is based on? Was he originally took over for the old Santa Claus who he ran over or, or he killed? Did he kill the original Santa Claus or did Santa Claus just die? I don't know. Like, I remember him falling from the roof. Uh, so I'm going to be a really horrible Disney fan, I guess, right now. And I'm going to come clean. I'm going to cop clean. Ready? I have seen that movie but once. And it was many years ago. It has never gotten a repeat viewing for me in this household. I have not watched the Santa Claus more than once. I think I watched the Santa Claus two once and the third one with what was it? Martin short, maybe one time as well. So 
I am not a, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, everybody. I am not a fan of this franchise. I don't know why I just cannot get into it. Mark, you, you remember how I just said about Chevy Chase? Yes. I feel that way about Tim Allen also. <laughs> so I've never watched this movie either. Um, I've no. seen it. Holly Holly will watch it. She loves the Santa Claus. I, again, look, I get it. I get a I lot of people it love it. When it's I, on. I just don't watch it. But it's the same way with Hocus Pocus. I understand there's a lot of people that love Hocus Pocus. Love it. I just do not. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm so sorry. And as people are screaming at their receivers right now, the sacrilege that I'm copping to, I apologize for not having seen the Santa Claus or any of them, uh, but I will watch the Santa Clauses if only to see where the, uh, the series concludes. <laughs> now that you have brought the whole room down, Let's move on to our next article, well, Mark. Why, yeah, let's move on to something that's just joyous and uplifting, Greg, because this new, this next headline, it really just makes me feel so good about the world. A 37-year-old Romanian citizen who lives in Virginia, uh, Bica Crisson, was recently arrested, Greg, for sneaking into the Magic Kingdom with no ticket. And assaulting two cast members, according to the Orange County Sheriff Office report. Just pure Christmas spirit, dude. <laughs> wow. Yeah, according to the report, uh, Crisson walked through the turnstiles at the Magic Kingdom entrance without presenting a ticket for himself or his child. When Disney security attempted to stop the gentleman, he became physical with the Disney cast member and then pushed them out of his way. When approached again further in the park, he pushed that cast member out of the way as well as pretended to not be able to speak English. But according to the arrest report, he speaks English very well. <laughs> uh, Orange County Sheriff's Office was called to assist with the unruly guest as he was arrested and taken to the Orange County Jail. Croissant was charged with two counts of misdemeanor battery on the Disney cast members. The court records indicate the incident occurred August 19th could have been avoided if only we had a, he could have, you know, I don't know, purchased a ticket for himself and his kid. Uh, he resides in Virginia. And since he lives out of state, the bonds were doubled. I would say that I have no words, Greg, but I do have words. <laughs> and here's the thing. At this point, absolutely nothing shocks me anymore with behavior of guests and bad behavior of guests. We saw only a few weeks back that there was a family that tried to sneak their child in uh, saying, you know, they, they put their child into a stroller and the kid was clearly not two years old. This is the kind of stuff that we talked about is going to continue to proliferate throughout the, the world and throughout social media as people see these kind of things, it's just going to embolden more and more acts. This guy knew exactly what he was doing. There was no world with which he thought that this wasn't going to end with the confrontation. And I will, I will tell you, I think that this was purposefully just to push buttons, just to get 15 minutes of fame. There is no way that someone is this... I'm just going to say it's stupid... To think that they can just walk through a, a park and what did he think? Like, oh, well, I'll just push the cast members and they'll, they'll be like, oh, OK, fine. <laughs> Go ahead, hey, sir. Hey, I do not know. How do I get in the park? The Romanian the accent is. needs a little work. Hey, what do <laughs> Annie? I don't oh, all of a sudden, like now it's Watto. <laughs> it's Watto. He's now Romanian and he's at Disney World. <laughs> I... I'm t I, t look, first off, before I get into giggling about that, well, that's too late. Uh, we hope the cast members are fine. I, I would imagine this was just a pushing and shoving match or they tried to say, hey, look, stop. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is crazy. There's never, ever a reason to put your hands on cast members for anything. Uh, if they're stopping you that way, you've done something wrong. So it's on you in the first place. I don't think any regular person would ever think about doing something like this. And I agree with you. 
was this a stunt? I think it was, was a this stunt. Like, man. It's, it I had don't have the money to afford going to Disney, but I'm going to take my kid and we're going to push our way past it. And then really, it, you know, what really bothers me about the whole thing, Mark, is whoever used the word turnstile in the article. <laughs> <laughs> Where are turnstiles at Magic Kingdom? Maybe going on to the People Mover. They've removed real turnstiles from all over the park. Well, you know, I am bothered by the one word than I am for Watto coming in and trying to use the force. I don't know do the force does not work on me. You know, Penny. what park has real turnstiles, Greg? What's that? Disneyland has real turnstiles. Well, uh, if they want to live in the past like they do uh, and not look towards the future, those are like we those do. are fighting words, man. All right. <laughs> well, listen. There's there's truly nothing more that we can say about that stupidity. And no, that, and that's purely it. But I, I mean, again, people are clicking on it, and I think people just are, are going to that article in droves in disbelief that someone would actually do something. But moving on. To our last article of the day, Greg, what do we got going on? This is this is clearly for you. You saved this article for yourself, and I'm jealous. I, I actually uh, we switched up how we did articles one, three, two, four because originally I was doing one, three, you were doing two, four. So just give people a little behind the scenes. <laughs> so I didn't know who was going to get this because both of us are huge fans and are looking forward to this more than anything else going on at Disney World right now. So over at Walt Disney World, selected cast members. Uh, Walt Disney World selected cast members for their new roles at Tron Light Cycle Run in the Magic Kingdom. Tron Light Cycle Run will be opening in spring of 2023, and the opening team of cast members is being notified of their new roles. The Disney World ambassadors surprised these cast members with the news, and you can go to chipandcompany.com to see the video of that. Uh, and then in their video, they said, attention users, we bring some exciting news from the grid. Team Blue has welcomed its newest recru recruits. We can't wait to open Tron Light Cycle Run with you in spring of 2023. Um, Mark, I, two things. One, yep. yay. I'm yeah. blown away. Can't. I, I'm happy. There's something about watching the cast members get selected because being part of an opening team uh, is a source of pride for cast members. Do you remember the video that w uh, went around when they were notifying the uh, cast members who were going to be on the opening team for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge? I do. And how emotional and wonderful that video was. And it made me happy to be part of humanity that people still loved this product and what loved what they were doing so much that they would become emotional about it. They would be tears of happiness and joy this did the same thing for me. Uh, yes, it's just there. It's being part of the opening team to open Tron Light Cycle Run. We are as excited as they are. But imagine being a cast member going, I've been selected for that opening team. So good for them. Great for the ambassadors to do this. Great to have it on video so you can share those emotions and that wonderful feeling that we all get. And I love happy stories like this, Mark. You know what I need? I need John Krasinski to bring back some good news one day. Well, I, I like to say that that's what we do here, Greg. <laughs> My man just tried to break in. <laughs> it's all it's all good. Um, so very interesting. And, and now I'm going to really nerd out. Let me just fully nerd Please. out if 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 I haven't done so already over the Tron coaster. But the I don't know if you've studied the language of the copy for this post, but it clearly tells us as writers who we will be partaking or who we will be in this equation. Uh, we didn't get a greetings programs. We get attention users. So we mm -hmm. are clearly the users in this equation. We are not programs in the computer world. We are not computer programs in Tron. We will be fighting, Greg, for the users I know I'm a total nerd, but I, I love that copy and it's just peeling back who we will be in the experience. Can I be Flynn? Uh, sure. Cause I want to open my own arcade next door to it. Uh, yeah, man, way to catch that. That's, that's amazing. I'm really looking forward to this. This is the one that has me truly excited uh, and being a user, I'm okay with. Uh, oh man, I, we could go so deep on Tron, but let's let's just let's, let's just 
Yeah, let's not. And instead, let's let's just add. So, Chip, would you be more excited to be one of the users or would you rather be a program in this whole experience of the Tron like cycle run? Hey, man, where's Chip? Mark, when last we saw Chip, he had embarked on a Viking quest to connect with his Norwegian culture. Surely he enjoyed some apple kick and learned how to pronounce Akershush. You did Since it. A, I, uh, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I had to slow. I've learned that if I slow it down, I can do it. Since arriving here in the continental U.S., Chip has gotten swept up into the spirit of the season. I think he has gone into the woods in search of the perfect Christmas tree. Buying his tree from a Christmas tree lot or getting an artificial Christmas tree just will not do it. So he has flown to the Pacific Northwest to find the perfect tree, hopefully a Douglas fir, to usher in the festive seasons. So uh, just uh, Chip, say hello to Clark Griswold for me, please. Little sap, little sap, Greg, little sap. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> wow, man, that's great. But <laughs> all right, man, moving on. It. Greg, every single week we deliver our random Rushmore of Disney that we thought up about 10 minutes to prior to coming on air. If you're not familiar with this, Rushmore are our top picks for the very best uh, and the best of the best. And this week, I'm delivering my Mount Rushmore of Christmas must-do experiences. Why not, Greg? We're ready in the season, and I have no reason to celebrate the season. Uh, as you know, Greg, Disney Parks magically transforms from Halloween to Disney overnight. One day it's spooky season. The next we have visions of sugar plums, holly, and mistletoe all throughout Walt Disney World. There are countless things to do during the holiday season. But what are the absolute must-do Christmas Disney items, Greg? I don't know. Stay tuned. Here are my top four things that you just absolutely must do for Disney at Christmas. All right, number one, Greg, is it even Christmas season if you don't do the gingerbread resort tour? Look, we all know the Grand Floridian has the gingerbread house, but this year the Contemporary has Cinderella's Castle, the Beach Club has the gingerbread carousel, the smells alone are worth the visit, but you can purchase gingerbread items, get into that holiday spirit with these attractive treats. The best part is that the gingerbread when all of this is done after the season and after the Christmas season, all of this gingerbread that is used to construct these monstrous, these massive, these amazing buildings, all of it is then recycled and fed to the local bee population to help pollinate. So none of the gingerbread ever goes to waste. That is my most amazing fun fact of all of the gingerbread houses. But if you don't visit the gingerbread houses, is it even Christmas at Disney, Greg? It is. It is not. Um, fun fact. Uh, apparently, you know the future. Did you know that? I, I did not know that they were doing Cinderella's Castle at Contemporary Resort. Where did you hear that from? Are they not? That has not been announced. I thought that I, I thought they announced that has not been announced. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. I thought that Disney announced that the Contemporary was getting a gingerbread house this year. And that it was going to be Cinderella's castle. If I am wrong, I will come on here and admit that I was wrong. Well, if I am wrong, then like a, a 20 lashes for me, my friend. I like, what did I, I, I say? Oh, hey, yes. 20 lashes. Yeah, I, I thought, I don't know. Well, let's, let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. It won't be the first time in recorded history that Mark has, has made a note, but we'll, we'll do some research. <laughs> I don't know. I know a guy. I'll call him and I'll, and I'll, I'll see. All right. Number two, man. I'm and not we, saying you're wrong because I know you're right. I just was wondering where we found this information. So am I right? I, that information has not been released. I don't think. Okay. Well, I listen, <laughs> I was told this by someone that I know that it is. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Number two. Whenever you think of Christmas, it always comes back to the big guy. That's right, Greg. Santa Claus is such a big part of the holiday around the world. And so 
You should see Santa Claus and the storytellers as he appears around the world in Epcot. This is one of my absolute favorite things to do. In years past, we saw Christmas storytellers in Mexico, in Norway, in Italy, in Japan, in the UK. And then there were additional storytellers. They did a Hanukkah storyteller in France. They did the Canadian holiday voyagers over in the Canada pavilion. But it's so beautiful to hear the story of Christmas in native languages in different uh, tones and to see the different body types of Santa Claus from around the world. And it's beautiful, no matter what cultural hearth it disseminates from, that the spirit of Christmas is something that unites us all around the world. So you have to celebrate Christmas with that international flair. Do the tour around the world. Take your time. Listen to the storytellers. And you can do that with my number three item. And number three on my list, Greg, I only have two words for you. Ready? Cookie stroll. Mm. Mm. So Epcot, Greg, and there's going to be people that are like, okay, you had me a cookie. And then I was a little bit interested after you said stroll because that implicated, you know, some exercise. So, Mark, I need more information. So Epcot challenges you, ladies and gentlemen, to complete your international festival passport by purchasing five delicious cookies as you walk around the World Showcase. The reward for doing so, however, is another treat. But the reward, I will argue, are these amazing and delicious cookies that you will enjoy as you promenade around the World Showcase. So this year, locations include um, over... Uh, you have the Dolce de Leche and Coconut Vanilla Shortbread at Noche Buena Cochina. Then uh, there's the Yukon Holiday Kitchen, and you, oh, it's not a cookie stroll without the Snickerdoodle made with Snicker Bar pieces. Uh, I had the Snickerdoodle last year. It was outstanding. There's some people that have their own spin on the Snickerdoodle that were not fans in our party, but I really, the Snickerdoodle was the standout for me. Uh, at Lahayam Holiday Lahayam. Kitchen. Lahayam! To life, to life, Lahayam. Lahayam, Lahayam, to life. Uh, are you a Fiddler on the Roof fan? I am. Okay, good. We'll talk about it later. Uh, black and white cookie, which is plant based. I did not like that cookie last year. I know you did. Mm? Again, hot take. Sorry, mm. but I wasn't a fan of the black and white. But I also need to preface this. I am in the home and the hearth, Greg, of the purest and most delicious black and white cookies. A story Traditions! For, yes, story for another day. Uh, at the American Holiday Table, you can get the chocolate crinkle cookie. This was amazing. Oh, uh, so at, good. Yes, at the Bavarian Holiday Kitchen, there's a Linzer cookie, also very good. Holiday Hearth Desserts, there's a gingerbread cookie. Sunshine Seasons has an M&M sugar cookie. Put the cookie down. Uh, and then at Connections wow, Cafe, at <laughs> the Connections Cafe, you can also get another incredible sugar cookie. So, uh, yeah. So the cookie stroll is my number three. Last and certainly not least on the Rushmore of things that you have to do for Christmas. You don't think, Greg, I would forget Mickey's very merry Christmas party. There is no better way to celebrate the season of magic than to attend this incredible after hours party filled with party specific treats, fireworks, characters, and parade. The parade alone is worth the price of admission. You'll surely enjoy it when it snopes on main street, USA. My only thing that I will say, Greg, and I have been quoted on this and it was my hot take. Hopefully the weather can cooperate to lend more Xmas vibes. And as it just does not feel right when it's 85 degrees and the snope is coming down. So let's hope and pray that the Florida weather patterns cooperate this year as the fans pack into Disney and the magic kingdom. As for me, Greg, while these are the top four things that I would say are there at Disney, you know that I'll be heading to New York city to see the tree at Rockefeller center enjoy a New York slice and to watch the Rockettes do their high kicks in the Christmas spectacular. But as for you and the Floridians, that is your Rushmore or the things that I think you just cannot miss at Disney at Christmas. I cannot debate these things. You cannot. They are your Rushmore. But can I just say, Throwing in the little jab there at the end about going to New York City and, and stuff. 
You were doing so well. I was so with you. I was, I was feeling joyous and wonderful. It's a life. Well, I am. <laughs> True story. I, uh, I played an extra in Fiddler on the Roof in a local high school production that the, uh, my, it was my old alma mater. And the director said to me, but what's the matter with you? Yeah. So she said to me, Mark, I need someone who's going to hit that high note. So I literally just was in this, a singular scene. I was like random Russian person and I played, they gave me a bottle of water that it was great because it kept my vocal cords <laughs> hydrated, but it obviously passed off as another liquid that was indigenous uh, to Russia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, I just stood on the table and like held that high note as long as I could. Nice. And hey. uh, yeah, and sang Lahayam. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Yeah, I love Fiddler. It's the perfect time of year to watch that. So anyway, Mark, thank you so much for this week's Rushmore. I, on the other hand. You're feeling am, spicy. I am feeling spicy, Mark. All right. So that, that can mean only one thing, Greg. And that is, it is time for the spicy hot take of the week. Every single week, one of the two of us is getting spicy and hot and bothered about something that they just have to talk about because it is really bothering the heck out of them. Greg, you're up this week. What are you going to blow hot on, my friend? Mark, I am taking a very passive, spicy, hot take this week. Uh, although things are grinding my gears locally at Walt Disney World Resorts, I do not think anything I would say about these issues is spicy enough. So today, my friend, I bring to you my Walt Disney World Parks and Resorts hot take, and it has to do with the holidays. In particular, two separate holidays. They would be Halloween and the festive season of the holidays, Christmas, Hanukkah, and of course, Kwanzaa. So Mark... Let us get ready to rumble as I tell you why Halloween is the most overrated time here at Walt Disney World Resorts and Parks. Shots fired. Halloween time has become a three-month celebration of what exactly? Being scary? Trick-or-treating? The colors orange and black? Jack Skellington and emo kids worshiping the nightmare before Christmas because those I've listed do not add to the overall Walt Disney World experience in any way. If I wanted to be scared and to have scary, I would just go over down the street to Universal Halloween Horror Nights. Trick or treats? No thank you because at the parks, it's all the same candy and so small you can barely call them candy at all. Wearing orange and black? I would rather see it on my hometown team, the Philadelphia Flyers. And please do not let me get started on how the emo kids have ruined Sally and Jack. Now, listen, I do not want to gatekeep the, the Nightmare Before Christmas to anyone. So let the emo kids have Nightmare Before Christmas at Halloween time. Halloween at Walt Disney Resort is lazy at best. No resort really is decorated. The parks, only the Magic Kingdom gets anything that's related to Halloween. Yes, the after hours party is amazing and is a lot of fun, but this is supposed to be Halloween time. And if only one park does it and no resort does anything, does this make it a real holiday in the world? My answer is no, Mark. There is no reason for people to plan around the Halloween season. None. And you want to know why no other park gets decorated and no resort gets anything more than maybe a pumpkin? It's because Christmas and the holidays mean way more to the people in this world. It is a time of rebirth, the winter solstice, the jolly old fat man bringing gifts and joy to all the little boys and girls out there. I say, let the emo kids have Nightmare Before Christmas during Halloween, but come November 1st, I should get it. You and I should be able to walk around with Jack Skellington in his Santa outfit and express our joy over how amazing this movie is. You want to know something, Mark? Nightmare Before Christmas is a Christmas movie. There, I said it. During the holiday time, we get special meals and snacks. We get all four parks with something special. Want to see something traditional? Hollywood Studios is for you. Want to celebrate with nature and big, beautiful tree? Animal Kingdom's the place to go. Epcot gets the festival holidays. And of course, Mickey is there at the Magic Kingdom with Mickey's A Very Merry Christmas. Halloween is the laziest holiday at Walt Disney World Resorts. And truly, what means more in this world? 
singing Christmas and holiday carols around a brisk fire, brisk fire with a family or loved ones, holding your Santa Jack Skellington with little Jimmy and Susan playing at your feet, or all those amazing Halloween carols we have of, and, and your child holding a Chucky doll that may or may not kill you while you're sleeping. Nothing, there is nothing better than the Christmas holiday and the holidays here at Walt Disney World. Halloween, goodbye, I bid you adieu. And that, my friend Mark, is my spicy hot take of the week. Look, I cannot debate you. I'm not allowed to debate you. But you said a lot of things, Greg, <clears throat> that could be debated. But let me just tell you a little story about me, about Mark. Because I just... I. I I feel like it might give you some perspective, all right? So when I was a young boy, my father took me into the city to see a marching band. He said, son, when you grow up, would you be the savior of the broken, the beaten, and the damned? And then he said, will you defeat them, your demons, and all the non-believers, the plans that they have made? Because one day, I'll leave you a phantom to lead you in the summer to join the black parade. And Greg, that has really dominated my life ever since just that little, that little trip with dad. Well, I hope you will carry on. Well, me me and the other, the other emo kids will carry on. We'll carry on. (laughs) How dare you, sir? How dare you? I'm here to everyone else. Who's here? Just know that Mark is here for you. Join the Black Parade. To all of you who are upset with that hot take, I want to let you know there is a place for you here, and it's with me. Well, that will do it for another episode of And Company. I have nothing to reply because I just don't want to because I'm not putting emo kids down because I like them. I'm just saying you can have never mind. I'm not even explaining it. I'm done. You, my friend, just amazed me. Well, that will do it for another episode of And Company. Please check out all the other podcasts from this week on the Chip and Company Podcast Network and stay with us uh, on Friday. We will be dropping a special episode, which is tomorrow, uh, where we talk to the um, heads of Loungefly. And we have a great interview with the director, uh, sorry, the, uh, yeah, the director of social media and marketing, and then the designers over there who, uh, vice presidents of designing, um, along with what their real titles are, because I'd lost it while I was trying to say this. So you will have to deal with me no more today, Mark. Um, so please stay with us, check out that episode, go back, listen to all the other episodes of this week. Um, and we have some amazing stuff coming up in over here at the chip and company podcast network. But as always, Mark, end of line. Carry on, Greg. Hey guys, Diz Life Mark here, and I want to tell you all about the official travel partner here at Chip and Company. Let our good friend Sarah at Destination to Travel help you plan your next Disney vacation. Sarah specializes in planning dream vacations for your family. She's an authorized Disney vacation planner, and she can help with every step of your magical vacation. The best thing is that her services are 100% free. Want to travel beyond Disney? Sarah has you covered there, too. Want to find out more? Fill out a trip request form over at the website at Chip & Co. or email her directly at sarahsolberg at d2travel.com. What are you waiting for? Start planning that dream vacation today. Email her at sarahsolberg at d2travel.com.